I, I'm going to channel my inner gangster today. Oh, yeah? You're going to yeah. be gangster? I think I could have functioned well in the mob world. Yeah? I think I could have. <laughs> um, make people swim with the fishes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, today we're at a place where everyone said we needed to go before we left Las Vegas. Yes. The Mob Museum. And when we were live, when we first got here, we were asking, what should we do? What should we do? And well, everybody was saying the Mob museum. museum. You got to go to the Mob Museum. So we're taking your advice. We're going to yes. go to the Mob Museum. We'll take you inside and we'll let you know what it's all about and if it's worth it. Organized racketeers dominated the illegal bootlegging industry as well as the urban machine bosses and the vice kings. They understood banking and other legitimate businesses and bribed policemen, judges, juries, witnesses, politicians, and even federal prohibition agents as the cost of doing business. The deadliest mob hit in American history happened on a chilly winter morning in a nondescript garage in Chicago's north side. Four armed men gunned down seven associates of bootlegger George Bugs Moran. This is the actual wall against which Bugs Moran's men were shot on February 14, 1929. They called themselves the Boys from Brooklyn. A newspaper reporter called them Murder, Inc. Mob leaders called them whenever they needed a hit. The mob was responsible for well over 1,000 murders nationwide in the 1930s. Several hundred of those have been definitively tied to Murder, Inc. To mobsters, a bet is a bet, whether on horses or ball games. As sports became big business, they wanted it in on the action. The 1919 World Series when Chicago White Sox players took bribes to throw games was an infamous example. Well, we just finished up on the third floor, which is the first floor that you're supposed story. to go through. Yeah. yeah. That, and, that was the birth of them. Yes, yeah, so you start at the top, and it was very cool so far. Yeah. It's tons of stuff. We were up there for like 30, 35 minutes just on the, the first level that we were supposed to start on. Yeah. And uh, it's just a ton of interesting stuff. It was. And I think what intrigued me the most was the St. Valentine murder. Yeah. I, I knew nothing about that. I didn't either, but that, the wall is still the there. The wall is awesome. Um, it talks about who all was killed, how many times they were shot. It and shows the, the coroner's the reports. bullets that were taken out of them were on display. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. And, and one of those dudes, oh, Peter. Peter got it in the got Peter. Got it in the Peter. <laughs> <laughs> that drawing, I was like, oh. oh Peter. <laughs> No, Peter. Oh, that's, that's a bad place to get shot. Yeah, but they talked about prohibition a lot. Yes. Uh, they and talked about prostitution a lot. A lot of gang activity. They talked about sports betting and the mob being involved with different sports um, teams throwing Well, the mob events. had their hand in a lot of things. Well, yeah, and they probably Politicians, st still do. Politicians, but Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so we're just at the tip of it. It was cool to see Al Capone's gun. It was very cool to see Al Capone's cool. gun. And then they talked about a lot of the, the guys who got caught uh, by the FBI who were sentenced to Alcatraz. Yes, who we, we saw their saw lineup in Alcatraz. At Alcatraz, yeah. which was very cool. So it all so kind of cool. ties together. Yeah. Uh, they talked about um, one of the bars here um, yeah. in Nevada, one of the very first bars yeah. here. It showed a picture where the wider hung out. Arizona Club. Yeah, so yeah. just a lot of the stuff here is already tied to a lot of the stuff that we've already talked about. Yeah. So very cool so, so far. Cool. I can't wait to see the, the rest of the stuff. <laughs> yeah. The current Mob Museum in Las Vegas was the first U.S. courthouse and post office in Las Vegas. It has been restored to appear as it was in 1950. The most famous hearing ever held here was a court case held on November 15, 1950, when a committee interviewed several witnesses about organized crime involvement in the Las Vegas casino industry. As law enforcement across the nation cracked down on illegal gambling, mobsters cast their eyes toward Las Vegas. 
Nevada had legalized gambling in 1931, and Las Vegas was an open city, meaning that no one syndicate dominated the town. That made an enticing destination for mobsters nationwide who were eager to start fresh and launch new ventures. Starting in the 1950s, most tourists unknowingly stayed and played in mob-connected casinos. As tourism exploded, mobsters found themselves rubbing elbows with showbiz celebrities and found themselves at the helm of a booming new business. Mob bosses found many ways to milk their cash cows. The most significant was the skim, which hid profits from official casino owners and from tax collectors. The idea behind the skim is simple. Pocket some of the cash before it's officially counted, reducing the amount reported as taxable income or shared with investors. Miami hotel owners Morris Landsberg and Sam Cohen, who bought the Flamingo in 1969, later admitted to skimming $36 million in untaxed income from the casino between 1960 and 1967. Well, we just finished up the second floor. Yes. yes. So interesting. This stuff is so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> the second floor is about the rise of the mob. The rise of the mob talks a lot about casinos. It's a lot about mob involvement in the in casinos. casinos, skimming, yes. yes, scheming, and what happens when you're caught skimming, murders <laughs> and disappearances and crazy goings on. Floored me to see just how involved Ohio was in the mob. Yeah, I know it's interesting to you because you because I'm from, from Ohio. There. I had no idea either, but Cleveland, Cleveland big time, was involved big time in gangsters. the mob. Yes, I was kind of disappointed in Cleveland. And a lot of people got killed there. <laughs> Born there. Yeah. They had some bombings there. that were mob involved. Yeah. And uh, man, I didn't know. Also, this place is a is a was it a, a courthouse? A courthouse. And at the beginning of that level, you go into a courtroom. Yeah. And that courtroom was actually used in trials of mobsters and gangsters. Yeah. With a lot of original furniture still in there. Yeah. So it was very, it was very interesting cool. to see. Yeah. And then um, there's an area that's quite graphic. Yeah. Which we're not going to share here, yeah. but uh, definitely worth coming to see because oh, yeah. uh, it shows graphic pictures of mobsters who were killed. It tells yeah. the story about why they were killed or why they were thought Allegedly. to be killed, <laughs> and uh, because they were messed with the wrong people yeah. and caught a bad one. Yeah. But it shows the actual picture of their their death, their death. Yeah. and it's yeah it's very interesting it's so interesting we've already been here for a couple hours and we're <laughs> just now through the second floor uh so we're gonna go through this this last floor yeah and i'm sure there's gonna be some cool stuff down here too yeah. can't wait man oh, yeah. very cool <laughs> The traditional mob may be a shadow of its former self, but organized crime still thrives around the world. Global crime networks cross national borders and link continents. They engage in everything from drug and human trafficking to counterfeiting and cybercrime. Today's crime groups take advantage of modern technologies to commit crimes and hide their ill-gotten gains, which amount to billions of dollars each year. In response, law enforcement agencies are building transnational partnerships to track down criminals. Well, we finished up inside yeah. of the Mob Museum, but we're not done yet. No. Because there's a little secret place. Speakeasy. A speakeasy <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> And you actually have to go outside to get to it. Yeah. There's a secret entrance, which we're gonna go. There's yeah. a little knock and a secret password we gotta give them yeah, to get into the speakeasy. Yeah. So we're gonna go down there and uh, we'll take Check you along with us. I heard another uh, museum person telling somebody that they actually do certain days or of the week or whatever, um, play music from that era. Oh, cool. And they have like live music. People come in dressed as flappers and dance oh, cool. and stuff. Yeah, really cool. Really cool. So we'll see what's uh, what's going on down there. Maybe grab a drink. Yeah. And uh, hopefully down. we'll remember the password to get in. <laughs> I won't forget it. It's weird. All right, here we go. <laughs> Well, I ordered 
the old fashioned and it's served prohibition style with a little light reading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's it from the Mob Museum. Very cool. Very cool. I think it's one of my favorites in Las Vegas so far. One really? of the favorite things we've yeah. done so far. Yeah, because cool. it's just so interesting. A lot of information. So much. We we got here about three hours ago. Yeah. And anyway, there's no way we saw everything. No, we didn't read everything. Um, they do also have an audio tour that you can go through. Yeah, which the, would be cool. The Give first, more info. Uh, the bottom floor, there's not a lot down there, but there are some specialty exhibits that you can pay extra to go through, like the, the crime lab, yeah. and then you can do like... Uh, but Andy down there, he was very knowledgeable. Yeah, it was very cool. Lab. Yeah, so yeah. thanks Andy for talking to us. And, um, and, and thank you to everybody at the Mob Museum. Yeah. All the staff were very helpful. Very accommodating. Thank you for allowing us to film out here. Yeah. If you get a chance to come out to the Mob Museum, definitely it's well do it. well worth the money. Well worth it. Yeah, and um, did I miss anything? The speakeasy was cool. The speakeasy, yeah. The speakeasy was awesome. It It is, which I wasn't thinking about it, but the drinks that they serve are true Prohibition era drinks. Yes. Which he informed are me strong. are half liquor, half whatever else, fruity, whatever you got yeah. going on. In They're there. half booze. Yeah. Way too strong for me. You got your money's worth for sure. <laughs> yes, the old you, fashioned was The drinks outstanding. were not expensive. No. That's what's crazy. For as much alcohol as you're getting, they were not expensive drinks. Yeah, it was very cool down there. It was a very uh, prohibition feel, feel to the speakeasy. With film and the music. And yeah, and the drinks were good, I thought. Yeah. I thought they were a little too strong, but I, I really enjoyed it. But I'm a lightweight, it. so that's why, for me, it was too strong. Yeah, so if you do come to the Mob Museum, definitely go down to the speakeasy. Yeah. Have a drink, because even, even if you uh, don't get a bunch of drinks, it's worth the experience in itself. Yes. Stick around for a few seconds because we're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is down in the description of the video. We appreciate you watching and we will see you next time. Bye.